Growing up a multiracial child was a challenge for Fanny Eaton given strict Victorian standards which frowned at out-of-wedlock children. Yet at 16, she was hired on as a servant. It's no wonder that in 1857, she ended up marrying James Eaton, a proprietary horse cab driver. With a husband to help provide better circumstances, she soon adjusted to marriage and motherhood, and to help make ends meet she hired herself out as an independent cleaning woman. However, it's assumed that the work paid very little and with the worries of a growing family, she needed to supplement her family's income. Hence, one reason she started modeling for artists at the Royal Academy of Arts. It's not known for certain how Fanny first came across her modeling position at the Arts Academy. It's also possible that she might have worked in the home of someone associated with the arts who envisioned her potential. According to Ferrari, a more plausible scenario was through her association with Jewish artist Simeon Solomon, who first captured her unique face on canvas in the painting The Mother of Moses which premiered in 1861 to the public. In Victorian England, the typical image of female attractiveness remained centered on Caucasian women having a porcelain complexion and vibrant flowing hair. Yet, with the introduction of the Pre-Raphaelite movement, a brotherhood of Oxford artists who leaned toward the unconventional, the old idealized beauty standard which marginalized other ethnicities soon faded. Instead, artists sought more exotical-looking women who appeared either androgynous or buxom in figure, redefining and epitomizing the new forward-thinking artistic movement. According to Ferrari, Fanny garnered much interest from formidable art talents such as Dante Gabriel Rossetti, John Everett Millay, Frederick Sands, and Robert Hawker Dowling. In his own words, the curator explains the artist's demand for her likeness Most of the art models lived an irregular life by Victorian standards, yet Eaton's journey was even more unconventional because of her mixed-race identity. She faced many challenges in life, marrying young, bearing ten children, and becoming a widow in her forties. That she continued working into her silver years shows us a determined spirit and humble existence, all the while her presence remained overshadowed and underrated in the Victorian art world. Several others depicted Fanny, and by 1865 Rossetti had got in on the act with the beloved. He wrote to his friend Brown, enthusing about Fanny's very fine head and figure. In 1867 Fanny sat for Millet, his Jephthah is the last known painting of her. She returned to London to live with her children and grandchildren, where she died at 88, immortalized on canvas forever.